to him belong the heavens and the earth. The ever living, he is the first. He's the owner of mercy. He sent his messengers to warn his creatures of the grave dangers of worshiping of the than Allah. There is none greater than the Creator. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillahi wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, to another episode in this series, Live Your Life on Purpose. My dear brothers and sisters, as we have discussed and reminded you each time, the goal for each and every one of us is everlasting paradise, wherein we will be given anything and everything that we can imagine. Now, while this goal should, in theory, keep us focused and dictate that we live a very determined and a very purposeful life, the unfortunate reality is we become distracted. We become diverted by the beauty and by the adornments and the amusements found in this dunya, in this life. The consequence of which is we forget ourselves. We forget our purpose and we lose sight of this most tremendous goal. In short, we become heedless. Heedlessness, ghafla. The question is, why? Why are we heedless? Why are we not paying attention to the bigger picture? Why are we not paying attention to our hereafter and to our deeds? Especially when we know the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Every soul shall taste death. And on the day of resurrection, each one of us will be paid our wages in full. So if we know that death will be coming, my dear brothers and sisters, why are we heedless with our hereafter? Do we think we can delay the appointed hour? Why are we heedless? My dear brothers and sisters, the people of heedlessness, they are never satisfied. Regardless of how much they accumulate, they collect more and more, but they do not benefit from what they collect. They build that which they never perhaps live in, and they hope for things they will never achieve. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He describes these people in the Quran when He says, Allah says, let them eat and let them enjoy themselves and let them be diverted by false hope for they are going to know. So we can eat, we can enjoy and play around in this life, my dear brothers and sisters. But guess what? You are going to know what's coming at you, Allah says. This should be like a wake-up call. It's a threat. So we need to exterminate this characteristic of heedlessness from our hearts. Easier said than done. So the question is, how? How can we do this? My dear brothers and sisters, arguably the single greatest way to help you remember your hereafter, the number one way to get rid of this characteristic of heedlessness is the advice of the Prophet وسلم, wherein he said, أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِ هَذِ مِنْ لذات. Abundantly remember the destroyer of pleasures, which is death, 
abundantly remember death. This is the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Five short words, concise but effective. For indeed, whoever abundantly remembers death, this person will be thinking about the hereafter. They will be holding themselves accountable and will be examining their deeds and they will keep themselves in check. My dear brothers and sisters, death can come at any moment. And when it does, those things that you work so hard to collect, your money, your car, your home, your toys, what will they avail you before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How will they benefit you before Allah? We know the answer. They will give us nothing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتُ ثَلَاثَةً فَيَرْجِعُ اثْنَانٍ وَيَبْقَى مَعَهُ وَاحِدٍ يَتْبَعُهُ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَعَمَلُهُ فَيَرْجِعُ أَهْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَيَبْقَى عَمَلُهُ He said that three things will follow the deceased person to the grave. Three things will follow. Two things will return back. But one thing and only one thing will remain. He said the three things that follow the deceased person, his family, his money, and his deeds. His family and his money return back and don't stay with him. But only his deeds will stay with him. My dear brothers and sisters, we collect and we collect. But none of that will do us any good before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are so diverted, and understandably so. For Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ He said the life of this world is only the enjoyment of deception. We are all deceived. We have been duped. We are enjoying life, having fun, possibly living large, and we have been deceived into thinking that we have time. I can repent later. I can turn back to Allah next week or next month. And this is the deception that we have to avoid, my dear brothers and sisters. There's a surah in the Quran, a surah that likely all of you know, have memorized, and perhaps even recite often. A surah which has a very profound and scary message. Surah At-Takathur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, This competition of increase, of trying to get more and more in this life, this competition, it diverts you. This competition of wanting to increase in your provisions of this dunya, it diverts you. For how long, my dear brothers and sisters, are we going to be diverted in this competition? busy in our lives, busy in our minds, seeking the dunya. Or how long are we going to be diverted? And when you think about it, we're so diverted. We go to pray. We pray whether it be at work, at the masjid. We go to Jumu'ah. As soon as the imam says, Assalamu alaikum to both sides, people jump up out of their seat and run back to the dunya. Not even a moment to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who gives you everything. This competition of increase, Allah says, it diverts you. Until you become an inhabitant of the grave. Until you visit the grave is the word. And when you open the books of tafsir, they explain that the word visit clearly does not mean when we make a visitation to go visit the graves. It means when we become an inhabitant of the grave, when we die and go to the grave. Or in fact, we are just visiting and we will be called from the grave. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that we are so preoccupied by the love of this world, its beauty, its delights, its adornments, its amusements, and this distracts us and diverts us from seeking the hereafter and desiring it. And we all know this to be true, and we've discussed it for several episodes. 
Allah then says that this preoccupation diverts us until we then just go to the graves. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Kalla sawfa ta'alamun. Thumma kalla sawfa ta'alamun. He says, nay, you are going to know. Then again, nay, you are going to know. Don't take my word for it. You will find out what's going to happen, Allah says. Al-Hassan al-Basri, he said, this is a threat after a threat, back to back from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, admonishing us, brothers and sisters, telling us that we are going to know and find out what is coming, referring to the punishment. And then the surah continues, Kalla law ta'alamuna ilm al yaqeen. Nay, if they only knew with the knowledge of certainty, if they only truly knew what was coming, they would not be heedless. They would not have this ghafla. They would be focused on the hereafter if they truly knew. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will surely see the hellfire. And then you will surely see it with the eye of certainty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He threatens the heedless with these verses, threatening them that they will see this blazing fire. And then the surah concludes, and then on that day, you will be asked about pleasure, meaning you will be asked about the comforts and the blessings you received in this life and whether or not you were grateful, you were thankful. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a short break. And when we come back, talk about how we can solve this most critical problem. What can we do to keep our focus on the hereafter? Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother in Islam, Abdurrahim Green, and you're watching Peace TV. A light from Allah in the darkness. A guide from Allah in the confusion. A cure from Allah for every sickness. The Quran. Join me, Muhammad Timham, as we study the beautiful passages of the Quran and the great lessons that they contain in Lessons from the Quran. From the Quran. Study about the glorious lessons that connect us to our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Lessons from the Quran. Every Thursday at 11 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. We are not addicted to dawah. Addiction implies a short-term fix. One doesn't need to get into the zone to talk about Islam. 
You do da'wah because it is a natural result of your commitment to Allah. If you don't talk, people are going to walk. The most effective combination in the propagation of true Islam is found in Dawa Ilallah. Join me, Arib Islam, as we go through Dawa Ilallah only on Peace TV. Follow the tips to make the task of Dawa result oriented in Dawa Ilallah next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back, dear brothers and sisters. My dear brothers and sisters, as we have discussed and reminded you each time, the goal for each and every one of us is everlasting paradise, wherein we will be given anything and everything that we can imagine. Now, while this goal should, in theory, keep us focused, and dictate that we live a very determined and a very purposeful life. The unfortunate reality is we become distracted. We become diverted by the beauty and by the adornments and the amusements found in this dunya, in this life. The consequence of which is we forget ourselves. We forget our purpose, and we lose sight of this most tremendous goal. In short, we become heedless. Heedlessness, ghafla. The question is, why? Why are we heedless? Why are we not paying attention to the bigger picture? Why are we not paying attention to our hereafter and to our deeds. Especially when we know the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut, wa innama tuwafawna ujurakum yawm al-qiyamah. Every soul shall taste death. And on the day of resurrection, each one of us will be paid our wages in full. So if we know that death will be coming, my dear brothers and sisters, why are we heedless with our hereafter? All of you have perhaps heard the following story of Abu Bakr and Umar. May Allah be pleased with them. When they were sitting outside one night, the Prophet ﷺ, he came out and he saw them and asked them, why are you just sitting here? And they told him the truth. They said, we came out because we were hungry. And the Prophet ﷺ then said, basically, me too. For he came out for that same reason. They went to a house from a man from amongst the Ansar. And a woman received them and said that the man of the house was out fetching some water. When he came back, as you can imagine, he was so excited that the Prophet of Allah ﷺ came to his house. So the man immediately, he hung the water bucket near a palm tree. He climbed the tree, returned back with a cluster of dates. And then the man slaughtered a non-milking sheep and they had a tremendous feast. To this, the Prophet ﷺ then said to the companions, You will be asked about this on the day of judgment. My dear brothers and sisters, they're asked about that one meal. What about us? How often do we have feasts like that? For some of us, daily. So we are going to be asked about so much, yet we are so heedless and so ungrateful, reminding us of the ayah mentioned previously where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ that so few of my servants are grateful, are thankful. And this heedlessness, it not only hurts our deen and our life and religion, but it hurts our hereafter. 
So we need to correct this, my dear brothers and sisters. And the starting point is, again, that hadith, that advice, those five tremendous words from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Akfiru min dhikri hadha min ladhat. Abundantly remember the destroyer of pleasures. Abundantly remember death. Use this advice. Use this remembrance, my dear brothers and sisters, to change your ways. Death can come at any instant. And you don't want your repentance to be too late. And what is one of the best ways for you to remember death? The Prophet ﷺ said, نَهِيتُكُمْ عَنْ زِيَارَةِ الْقُبُورِ فَزُورُوهَا فَإِنَّهَا تُذَكِّرُ الْآخِرَةِ He said, I had previously forbidden you from visiting the graves. But now I tell you, visit the graves. For verily, they help to remind you of the hereafter. Visit the graves, my dear brothers. This soften the hearts in ways you cannot even imagine. And if you remember, the hadith mentioned last episode, we talked about the rights of every brother on his Muslim brother. The rights that we are commanded to do, one of which is to follow your brother's funeral. But have you ever asked yourself why? There's much wisdom why we were commanded to follow the funeral of our brother. The purpose of this janazah is not for us to go give our final condolences, for us to have a big feast and eat food in almost a party, which is done amazingly in some cultures. This is not the purpose. This is not the purpose of the janazah. And this is not the reason the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to follow the funeral of our brothers and sisters. The janazah, my dear brothers and sisters, it's for you and for me. The purpose of our following this janazah is for us to wake up, hopefully, and realize that here we are. We are making prayer over so-and-so. We are putting so-and-so in the ground today. But maybe tomorrow will be my turn. Maybe tomorrow, other people will be putting me in the ground. They will be praying on me. And I won't have my family. I won't have my money. All I will have is the one thing remaining, my deeds. So my dear brothers and sisters, this serves as a wake-up call for each one of us. The Prophet ﷺ, he stood at the edge of a grave and he was crying. So get this mental picture, standing at the edge of a grave and crying. And he said, Ya ikhwani, li hadha fa'a'iddu. Oh, my brothers, for this, prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves. He was crying. In fact, he had seen paradise and hellfire. This was not an abstract, distant thing to him, as it is, unfortunately, to most of us. As such, he was crying. Because he knew that many from his ummah would unfortunately be in the hellfire. So he told us, for this, prepare ourselves. My dear brothers and sisters, we need to prepare ourselves for our hereafter. How are you doing in this preparation? What are we waiting for? How long are we going to be diverted? You could go walk outside today, go down the street, and get hit by a car, and tomorrow, people are praying your janazah. And don't think this doesn't happen, my dear brothers and sisters, for it happens every day. Do not delay. Do not delay your repentance, your tawbah that we talked about. Change your life. Turn back now. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your deeds. And remember that Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. But who is he forgiving towards? Remember the verse we mentioned previously, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
وَإِنِّي لَغَفَّارٌ لِمَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا ثُمَّ اهْتَدَى And verily, I am indeed forgiving to those who have, who turn back with this sincere repentance, who then believe and who do righteous deeds and are constant in doing them. So my dear brothers and sisters, ask yourself, are you from those people? It is upon us to respond. But how long will we delay our response? Will we be from those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described? Hatta zurtumul maqabir? That you will be so diverted in this distraction and diversion will continue until you become an inhabitant of the grave, never having turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this repentance until it's too late. Do not let this happen, my dear brothers and sisters. We need to make a course correction in our lives and work at removing this characteristic of heedlessness, of ghafla from our hearts. And we need to strive to prepare daily for our ultimate destination, everlasting paradise. Until next time, fi amanillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He created the universe to